Hello, and thanks for joining us on Encore. Coming up in today's music show. An album tinged with tragedy, Nick Cave and The Bad Seeds have released their 16th studio record. Putting the world to rights to an eclectic soundtrack, La Fête de l'Humanité sets up stage here in Paris. And we meet Jackie Terrasson and Stéphane Belmondo. The jazz musicians are here to talk about their latest collaboration on the album Mother. Welcome to the show, Jackie and Stefan. Thanks for having us. And I'm, of course, joined by our music critic, Mariam Saab. Hi, Mariam. Hello, Olivia. Well, let's start with this new album, Mother. You work together on the record, blending uh, brass and piano. Uh, you work together quite a bit. How does the joint dynamic work? Is it always harmonious? Yeah, well, I've known um, uh, Stefan and I, we've known each other for 30 years, and... Uh, uh, we've been playing uh, extensively uh, for the last four years and decided to document this uh, uh, relationship, musical mm. relationship. Uh, and uh, the album is composed of uh, some originals and some standards and some uh, uh, takes on uh, um, f uh, music from movies. French and movies. French movies, yeah. <laughs> And uh, yeah, it's you know it's really it's really um, the story of a partnership and a, a friendship. That's 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 pretty deep. Okay, yeah. a musical partnership, but also yeah. English and French, which is good mm -hmm. for us here at France Cat. Yeah. Well, let's take a look at the two of you in action playing "Mother" from the new record. Now, we were having a little chat before uh, we kept, we went on air, uh, and you said that jazz today is lacking edge, especially the young upstarts coming up. So what's going on with the jazz scene today? It's the fun. Beautiful. Where's all the fire <laughs> going? No, I think there's a lot of uh, amazing talents out, out there. Uh, but sometimes, I, and I hate, to, I hate to put a negative spin on anything, but sometimes it feels like uh, music is approached in a... In a in a word that's that's more like a sport instead of uh, something that should be all about emotions. That's that's it, you know. Yeah, yeah because many many school today, you know, of jazz, you know, especially conservatory in Paris and uh, the same uh, uh, state. You know? Yeah, maybe, maybe for that. but the uh, the amount of talent is amazing. There really are so many young kids who can really play. They just need to. Um, be more focused on music than performance. On letting mm. loose a little bit. Do you think in the contemporary music marketplace, jazz is is losing its way a little bit today? Is it hard to find a foothold? It's definitely less popular, but I think um, you could say that about live music in general, you know, and not only jazz. Mm. Uh, um, and it's really a, a, a treat and a pleasure when you see some youngsters that show up in jazz clubs. and. Uh, um, but I think, you know, the general business of music is, has been suffering, and uh, anyone would tell you that, you know. And uh, with the, the internet and the free music, every, the free downloads and all that stuff, uh, you know, it's, 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 it's a, different, a different vibe. Now, you, you both have had a long and, and very successful careers as jazz musicians. You're both at the head, uh, the head of your game. Now, what's been your standout experiences as sidemen? You've collaborated with some of the greats in the business. Yeah. Can you drop some names for us? Uh, Cassandra uh -huh. Wilson, Didi Bridgewater, Charles Aznavour. Uh, Stefan Belmondo. Um. Thank you. I know. I don't think that's. I know. I'm seeing sometimes. No, no. But the same. I I, I collaborated for two many years with Didi Bridgewater and uh, Gregory Porter. He's singing my last record. And, and you're I'm interested in world music as well. I know you've collaborated with some Brazilian musicians. Yeah, Milton Nascimento. I yeah. did a chance to to play to Milton, rock on me with Milton. Yes. Wow. Is it as gratifying as being the band leader when you're the side man? Is it still a 
uh, as an enjoyable an experience? Yeah, it's a, it's different thing. Um, I really appreciate when people hire me because they know that uh, I'm gonna just bring my salt and pepper, my 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 identity, to to uh, to their music. Mm. Uh, and when you're a leader, it's it's, it's another thing. Um, but basically, when I'm playing with a, a great singer or, or a instrumentalist, the the thing you want to do is provide the best um, background for them. You know, mm. and it's, uh, it's a treat. Sometimes you feel freer actually than when you're in charge. Speaking of your identity, we were also talking about some of your pre-show rituals. Care to share a few of those? Who's the wild one out of the two? Who's the wild one? I don't know. Maybe me. Right. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, really, yeah. Uh, no, um, the, the pre, uh, pre-show pre rituals are really, we, we share a glass of wine and we just go on stage and get uh, totally uh, immersed in, in, in the, the bubbles of music. So nothing too rock and roll then? Really quite quiet, I get the impression. Well, I practice yoga for about 45 minutes before I go on stage and I drink uh, two bottles of water. <laughs> and I do my, uh, my Buddhism prayers and, uh, yeah. and all that yeah. stuff. Yeah. And then okay. you just let loose. And then I let mm-hmm. loose. It's a very physical practice. Okay, well, mm-hmm. we're moving to new releases now. And this is a bittersweet return for uh, Nick Cave and the Bad Seeds. They were actually recording their album Skeleton Tree when a personal tragedy struck the lead singer, Nick Cave. Mary can you tell us what happened? Uh, this is a really tragic story. Nick Cave's family suffered a catastrophic loss last July. The frontman's 15-year-old son, Arthur, who's one of a twin, fell off a Brighton cliff. Now, the tragedy, uh, as you can imagine, tore its way into the creative process. Now, Nick Cave's talent as a lyricist and a composer cuts straight to the heart on lead song, Jesus Alone. His grief is painfully beautiful. It's palpable. I mean, you can feel it as the piano breaks, as the strings pulse, and between the tremor of just a barely there drum beat. It almost sounds like Nick's voice calling out from a dark abyss as he really struggles with uh, the notion of God, solitude and death. Let's take a look at the clip. You're an African doctor harvesting tear ducts. You believe in God, but you get no special dispensation for this belief now. You're an old man sitting by a fire, you're the mist rolling off the sea. Now, uh, Jackie and Stefan, your record is called Mother. Can we, are we right to assume that you two have drawn on uh, inspiration from your own family for this, uh, for this album? Yeah, well, the record was not supposed to be called Mother. Mm. Uh, it's just that um, just my mom passed away in June, this uh, three months ago. And I suggested to Stefan and to the producers and to the record label that we rename uh, mm. the, the album in a, in a sort of a tribute to, to my mom. Yeah. That, but it's uh, dedicated to all mother. Yeah, to all yeah, mothers, well, actually. It's yeah. dedicated to all mothers, yeah. to all yes. women who want yeah. to be mothers, to all women who mm. couldn't be mothers, to mm. all women who were mothers. Who, um, mm. Yeah, it's a beautiful artistic tribute there. Thank you. Mm. Similar to, to, to what Nick Cave is doing in, in a way. I mean, at the same time that that record's being released, there's also a document, uh, documentary film, actually, that talks about the, that period in his life. Yes, uh, Nick Cave said that following his son's death, doing any interviews to promote... Uh, this record was just inconceivable. So to communicate what he called the state of things, he teamed up with director Andrew Dominic to share his journey through music and through grief. Now, the black and white 3D film, One More Time with Feeling, has been described as a portrait of a person going through an extraordinary experience. Here's a teaser. We keep on being ourselves, but just hopefully better versions of ourselves but what happens when an event occurs that is so catastrophic that you just change you change from the known person to an unknown person Next, we've got new music from rapper M.I.A. It's her fifth and reportedly final album. 
Let's have a listen to the first single from that record. This is Go Off. It was actually directed by the rapper herself, Mariam. Can you tell me what direction she's going in with this new album? Now, at first glance of the album sleeve, you might think that she sold out uh, on one of the tracks. MIA teams up with British uh, boy bander, or former boy bander, Zayn on Free Done. But never fear, because once you crank up the tunes, it's clear that she still very much marches to the beat of her own drum on AIM with longtime collaborator, American electronic DJ and producer Diplo back in her corner along with Skrillex and Blackstar, MIA has come full circle back to her revolutionary roots fusing the sounds of East and West. MIA is making a genre busting statement uh, at its most subversive on this record, turning up the volume on uh, really universal issues like the refugee crisis with songs like Border and Visa. OK, one to watch from MIA then. Next, we're moving to live music. And here in Paris, the annual Fête de l'Humanité is taking place. It's quite a singular festival because it's about as political as it is musical. Tell us more about it. The Fête de la Humain, as it's affectionately called, is a musical tradition that extends back to 1930 when uh, the festival was first organised by the French Communist Party. Now, what started out with a 1,000 spectators has since grown to upward of 600,000. For its epic 81st run, it will unfold much like every other year as a playground for music and ideas, uh, throwing the spotlight on shows, political meetings and debates, a social forum, a book fair and a sporting ground, uniting people from all walks of life under the banner of Three Days to Remake the World. The headliners include electro-pop outfit Chemical Brothers, soul stylings of Lauren Hill, uh, Malian singer Rokia Traore and French powerhouse duo Alain Souchon and Laurent Woolsey. OK, well, that's one last festival to wrap up the season. Sadly, that's all we've got time for. Jackie and Stefan, thanks so much for joining us. Thank you. Thank you. We'll leave you with a revamped version of the Black Eyed Peas' Where is the Love? Remember to check out our website. You can also keep up with Encore on social media. There's more news coming up on France 4 after this. Wrong information or was shown by the media.